Howdy! It's Tubal Kane again, and this is day three of my dynamo build. And I got up extra early because I was quite excited about getting started. Now I'm going to continue working on the statter. There isn't too much left to do on this, but notice that uh, this will not fit into larger chucks. I talked about boring this now. That's the next operation, boring this inch and a half. But it will not work in the larger chucks, but it, it fits just perfectly into the smaller Atlas 3-jaw scroll chuck. And uh, for the packing here, remember I don't want to drill into or, or bore into the chuck. However, this is about a one and a half inch hole almost, so there probably wasn't too much danger. But I still like to back it up with some packing in here. And that really is what's left of the packing that I used on the rotary table the other day. And I also like to put a little copper around this to uh, protect it from the vice jaws. So let me get that on and, and mount it on the lathe and I'll see you over at the Atlas Craftsman 12 inch presently. At the Atlas lathe now I'm going to start by drilling it out half inch and then I'm going to work my way up with uh, reduced shanked bits. Uh, no particular reason for that other than my larger bits have a number three more taper that will not fit into this uh, tailstock quill. So I'm sticking with this with the straight shank here and see how that works. Remember that uh, do not run this at too high a speed because I am uh, out of balance. Now that's not going to be noticeable uh, at this speed and I will be reducing the speed anyway as I get into the larger bits. That's going to be a little bit off center, so watch the drill bit follow it, but I don't care. Three quarter drill bit. One inch bit, slower speed hoping that the chuck doesn't spin in the quill. And that's why I'm going up uh, just by fractions. And if it spins, I'll just switch to the boring bar. One and one sixteen. I know that's going to spin in the quill. I'm now set up with the Cirola tool post and a Cirola boring bar, three quarter in diameter. Always use the largest boring bar possible for rigidity, otherwise they flex like a willow tree. And I have set the uh, carriage stop so I won't run into the chuck. And I'm going to take it out. Machine it till I get to that line, or when I get close to the line, of course, I'll be measuring. And uh, one and a half inches is my target size. This is my final pass. I'm taking off about three thousandths and I'm feeding with power feed toward the tail stock and that should bring me right about to one and a half inch diameter. And there I am within a couple thousandths. I'll put a little chamfer on here and I'm ready to remove it from the lathe. It's looking pretty good at this point. Now I'm in need of magnets and they're still in China. 
So what I'm going to do for now is drill these holes out and use these magnets here which are the same size as what is in here which is 5 16 now if I need larger ones as I assemble this I'll, I'll wait until I get my other ones and I'll, and I'll modify it but these are going to work at least for now another thing I'm going to do is to take the base here and uh, saw off the gates and clean this up just a little bit because again that's going to be the base for this So I'll do that off camera. I've done several things. I cleaned up this casting for the base just a little bit and that's all that I can do to that right now because I just don't know where to locate the holes yet. And uh, on this uh, again I have drilled and reamed some 5 16 holes and I've got magnets in there. These holes were drilled of course from this side and there's a little bit of a shoulder. You probably can't see it here but I did not want the magnets to push all the way through which they tended to do in the other ones and get uh, attracted to and stuck onto the armature. Now I may use more than one magnet in those holes and uh, whatever I put in there I can put a little clay or cork or epoxy or whatever to hold those in place. When you install magnets you of course have to have uh, opposite poles. I looked all over the house for a compass and absolutely could not find one. I'm sure I've had many of them over the years. So I had to take a stud finder. I went down to Walmart and it's $5 for a little compass. And you know I just wanted a 25 center. But I live in the 50s. So anyway my stud finder and I had to cut a hole in it so I could put a little tape on there to identify the pole. I put a little lifting eye on here simply because I like the looks of it. No other good reason. Now I'm going to start on the rotor or the armature. I'm going to use 5 8 steel. Soft iron really is best or some kind of silicone steel but this is just 5 8 steel that I've got. And I want to start with a, with a long piece that I can hang on to and then later on I'll cut it off. I'll do the uh, cross hole and then uh, the the grooves for winding the 24 gauge magnet wire and uh, then I'll trim it the length and I also have to put a bit of a radius on the end as you see or do not see here that will match with the stator just to give it clearance the first thing I did here for the armature is to polish it a little bit just to get the uh, rust and everything off of it. Put some bluing on. Now I laid out a hole since this is uh, one and a half inches in diameter a little bit more than three quarters from the end because I intend to trim it. Now I must drill a 3 16 cross hole for the main shaft. I'm going to use the Heinrich jig and the way I like to do it is that's going to put the hole right through the center. I like to lay it in here and then using my little flashlight underneath here I look down the Norden bomb site here and line it up with that line clamp it and I'll go over to the drill press and drill it 3 16 and I'll be back presently. I've drilled the 3 16 cross hole I put uh, this in V-blocks just to hang on to it. Now this is a little piece of 3 16 rod with a center hole in it. Because I need to know where the center of that hole is. So, taking my dividers now, and this one is set at uh, three quarters, and that defines the overall length of this armature. So fitting that right into that little hole, I'm scribing it right there, and it's not easy to see, and swinging it around, So the first thing I'll do when I put it in the lathe is to face it down to this line right here. And I told you I cut that just a little bit longer on purpose. Then using the other stereo dividers, and that's just set at eighth inch, 
again in that little center hole scribing a little line there and a little line there and I'm going to take it to the lathe now and using a cutoff tool I'm going to groove it starting near the outside here all the way up to here and uh, I'm going to take it down to 3 16 diameter starting at this end and then over here and that is the diameter around which the magnet wire will be wound. Let me clarify it again. That's the end point of the armature. This is the other end point, but I'm laying out another line here for the spool. So right there and there is where I'm going to turn it down. So in other words, between this line and this line, it'll be turned down to 3 16 diameter to form a spool of sorts. Over to the lathe we go. I'm at the closing lathe, and this is indeed the debut of my new gator chuck. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And zooming in here just a little bit now, I've already faced the end, and I'm now ready with my 3 30 seconds wide cutoff tool to uh, plunge cut to the depth of, uh, or not the depth, but so that I get the diameter of uh, around 3 16 and I will check that diameter with this elegantly proportional brown and sharp 3 inch outside caliper. Too much information? set the graduated collar here on my crossfeed to zero so I won't need the caliper anymore and then the whole idea is that I'm going to back out move it down at least half the width of that tool and plunge cut again I will continue to do that until I get down to my other layout line which is fairly close to that hole. Now why am I using a cutoff tool? Because it would be most difficult to get in there with that type of tool or really any kind of uh, high speed, uh, speed steel tool and work my way back and forth and yet get square shoulders on there. work out of the chuck just a little bit and I'm going to repeat the entire operation right here. And so on. And here 
do you understand now why I started on this end rather than the other end because I had rigidity all the way along to, to my last cut whereas if I would have started here at some point it would have broke off or bent uh, bent and then using a calipers here I have the same dimension in both grooves now I'm ready to insulate and then uh, start the winding and I do not want to cut this off yet I still want that waste stock on there to hold it while I wind the copper because I intend to do the winding on the lathe. You know it's quite a pleasure working on models when you have plenty of precision tools and the smaller sizes and those of you uh, that are interested go ahead and watch my YouTube video uh, called Toolbox Tour or several parts that uh, was a popular video I had several Our years ago so can. check that out if you like precision man. tools now I am ready to start insulating this in fact I already have insulated uh, just one end of it and I'm using black tape now on the other one I used gasket material but it was rather difficult to handle and glue on there so I'm simply taking a three-quarter inch wide electrical tape and uh, punching a hole in it 3 sixteenths of course as such taking my scissors and applying it like this Next, I took a small ball peen hammer and tapped it all the way around, just like making a gasket. And now I've insulated the ends and I got two more to go. Then I took half inch wide electrical tape and wrapped the 3 16 portion here and uh, used a creamsicle stick here to, to rub it down nicely. Why is it it's rather hard to find the half inch wide tape as opposed to the three quarter and when you do find it it costs two or three times as much even though you're only getting half as much. Hmm. It's one of life's mysteries. Well that's just about enough fun for today. Tomorrow I will wind the armature with 24 gauge magnet wire as measured on the American Standard Wire Gauge for non-ferrous metals. I'll see you tomorrow.